As a product manager, I struggled with how to break down complex large features and customer journeys while at the same time figuring out how to include various teams, communicate effectively with management, and identify the most important customer problems to solve first. After learning how to use user story mapping, I never looked back. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to transform your user story mapping from a chaotic mess into a clear, well-structured plan. User story mapping lets you define all the features and user stories you might need, outline the minimum viable product, and plan for future releases, all while collaborating with various teams. This ensures credibility and transparency with your leadership team showing how you've arrived at the recommendations. As a product manager and expert on the customers, I often faced certain challenges when trying to build new product features, which included missing crucial customer problems, which would later be pointed out to me by an account manager or a salesperson, management often questioning why we're focusing on one problem over another, and general team frustrations because people felt excluded from the decision-making processes. In my new role at a startup digital product company, one of my first tasks was to map out certain parts of the customer journey and identify the most significant pain points for our customers with a recommendation of a few things that we could go and do more discovery and explanation on. However, I quickly uncovered several hurdles after speaking to people internally. There was real scarce data availability in the business. There was no written records of customer insights. I mean, I don't know what I expected. Uh, I didn't have the luxury of time to conduct customer interviews as it would have taken around a month. And all the vital information that I needed to know about our customers was trapped inside the minds of colleagues like account managers and salespeople. And this led me to a certain realization that my current product management tools weren't gonna cut it. So this problem was multifaceted. We needed an approach that was gonna put the customers at the center. Something customer centric is vital in order to prioritize their problems effectively. Gathering insights from various teams was also crucial while making sure that they had input into the process. And lastly, management needed to be brought in and understand where we were gonna focus our resources and why. So I asked myself, why is this important? Where do I start? Well, we need to understand what to build first based on what's important to the user so that we can deliver value to them because if we can solve their problem, then they'll pay us for our service and we need money to survive as a business. I thought someone else must have dealt with this problem before, so I had the idea, why don't I just reach out to my network? So after I got on LinkedIn and found a couple of heads of products and spoke to them about this, the words user story mapping kept coming up. So what is it? Well, user story mapping is a collaborative technique which involves working with different teams to map out user stories, which are short, simple descriptions of a problem from a user's perspective. Now you use that to effectively plan releases and deliver value based on the customer's needs. And this is what it looks like, but we'll come back to that later. So how does it differ from other techniques? Well, you start with the end and the user in mind, and that's what allows for that customer-centric focus. It's not a business one. You can also prioritize what to solve first based on what gives the largest benefit to the user. It's also an iterative process, so you can build on it as new information comes to light over time. Unlike roadmaps that focus on timelines, the goal here is to highlight the entire perfect journey for a customer. And lastly, it gives you that clear understanding of what your minimum viable product is, as well as what your future releases might look like. So I had a clear plan, and this is where I can set up my Miro board for the session, which includes my section to show the agenda, contracting and the templates that I was going to use. The easiest thing to do is that in the first five minutes, you wanna talk through how the session's going to work, why it's important and how these templates work. We won't specifically cover how to set an agenda or how to contract here, but let me know if it's something you wanna do in the future. And the best way to show you how all this works is to use an example. And the one I really like is how can we help Dave who lives in the city get to work? Why is that important? So they can add value to the business that hires them. And user story mapping is really simple, right? So you can see here we have a start and a finish, and then we have these big lumps of things uh, that go together, like waking up, cleaning themselves, having breakfast, leaving the house, traveling, getting to work as in actually in the building. So we call those features, right? Those are the big things, and then underneath them are the user stories, and that's how you break something down into a simple customer problem. And when we do that for this, we're not gonna go through every single version, but you can see here, that when we start to break this out, what it looks like is, okay, they have to turn off their alarm, they need to get out of bed, they need to go to the toilet and shower. For breakfast, they might have coffee, tea, make toast, 
when they're leaving, they might grab their bag, put on a coat, get their wallet and keys. And you can sort of see this then kind of ends up being our customer journey. This is the user story mapping, all the things they need to do. It's a perfect journey. Now, that's going to be the bit we're going to go through at the start. And then what we're going to do is this prioritization framework. And this is where I expect a lot of discussion to happen in this group. And I've filled one out here just so you can see an example. But once we have all of those, we then really want to debate what are the must haves and the should haves and the could haves and the won't haves. The must haves are what do they absolutely have to do in order to get to work? So they have to put on clothes. They don't want to turn up naked. Uh, they need to get to the train. They need to check their phone wallet and keys. They need to get to their desk, turn on the computer. Then we have should haves, which are things that we would think the customer should do. So it would be nice for them to be able to go to the toilet, shower, brush their teeth, but it's not a necessity. Then you have could haves, which are, they don't really need to do this every day, but they can. So they can put on a coat depending on, a uh, on the weather. They can have uh, toast if they want. And then the won't haves are just things that we don't really consider important. Like they just don't really have to shave. Now, what that means is after that discussion, we're gonna end up with this beautiful framework here. And that means that we have on the left-hand side, our minimum viable product. This is gonna show us what are the real key problems that we have to solve for Dave for him to get to work. And you realize that actually that ends up being this group of user stories here. We then might say, okay, well in a future release or a next part of his journey, we wanna do these next batch of things. And then you could have the could do, won't do. These are future releases, things that we don't really think are that important. We might look at them down the line. And this is great because now, instead of saying, okay, these are all the things we need to do, this is what a perfect customer journey looks like, and we're gonna spend loads of time doing that, we can now look at this and say, ah, here are the 12 uh, things, or 12 or so things that are really important, and these are the problems that we're gonna go solve on day one, and then we're gonna go, and we're gonna look at those yellow post-it notes. So this is the massive value of user story mapping. We're gonna make sure we get everybody's views, everyone's inputs, and then the business will understand and it will be really clear why everything in that MVP column is why we've decided to go with it because it's what everyone agreed is the most important. So let's double back to my original problems and how user story mapping helped me. I needed an approach that was gonna put the customers at the heart of it. So that customer-centric approach. And user story mapping is done from the customer's perspective, not from the business perspective. Tick. Gathering insights from various teams while making sure that they had input was achieved through collaboration in the workshop, which allowed me to uncover all of the important customer problems. And this is what allowed people to have their voices heard and make sure that their input was valued. So last but not least, management need to be brought in and they need to understand why are we focusing our resources here versus over here. And this process gives you credibility with management. So you've gained these insights from various teams across the business and you can play that back to them. It also helps with that transparency because you can clearly talk through how you as a collective group have come to the conclusion of what's most important. You're not presenting back what you think, you're presenting back what the collective view of the business is based on their knowledge of the customer. If you want to access my Miro templates or have a look at some additional links around user story mappings, you can find it all in the description below. Thanks very much. Chat to you later.